Hi, it's Doug Brown, Head of Time Management at EPUs UK, here with you again. For this next video, I'd like to take you through another of the SAP HCM Time Management Improvements released in May of 2013. This improvement is called New InfoType for Absence Quota Group. Basically, what this improvement provides is a new InfoType that can be used to allocate an employee to a different set of absence quota rules and entitlement for specific time durations. Before we look at the improvement, let's look into the configuration around absence quotas. Absence quotas are used as a basis to represent an employee's entitlement to specific types of leave. The most common of these is annual leave, and I'll focus on this type of leave to illustrate the benefits of this new improvement. So creating an entitlement to annual leaves allows the employee to request their leave with reference to their entitlement in their given leave calendar. It allows them to check what remaining entitlement they have during that leave calendar as well, notably through the likes of ESS. From an employer's point of view, what it allows them to do is define leave entitlement rules for distinct groups of employees based on the agreed terms and conditions, and therefore allowing the system to ensure that those uh, agreements are adhered to. It also allows them to define additional system rules to prorate the leave for part-time employees, as well as joiners and leavers that happen during the leave year. It also ensures that the employee cannot take any more leave than they are entitled to. Let's look at configuration elements that allow the system to determine and create the correct amounts of leave for each employee. It's worth saying that while the concepts that go towards defining leave entitlement rules with quotas are pretty logical, they're heavily dependent on the defined groupings in the system, but I'll try to keep this as simple as possible and concentrate on the base entitlements and selection rules only. Base entitlements define the available quota types and amount of entitlement that is applicable to all employees in a defined set of groupings. The groupings used to assign the base entitlement are ESG for time quota types. This is determined by the employee's employee group and subgroup combination and is assigned to a one character key. Next we have the PSG for time quota types and that's determined by the employee's personnel area and sub area combination and assigned to a two character key. And lastly the PSG for time recording. This is again determined by the employee's personnel area and sub area combination and is assigned to a two character key. And is not only used in this area of configuration, but is also used in, say, time evaluation. So let's, for example, say the groupings that we're going to look at are as follows. The ESG for time quota types is 1, the PSG for time quota types is 08, and the PSG for time recording is 01. What can then happen is that a range of base entitlements can be created. Let's say they look something like this. The table is saying that the entitlement to annual leave for these groupings ranges from 20 to 30 days, but so far we haven't said what entitlement should be related to each type of employee. This is where the quota selection rule comes in. The quota selection rule is defined by a feature or a user exit that's used to interrogate the groupings of each employee and then assign them to a selection rule. The assigned selection rule is then used as a lookup key in the next configuration step, the selection rule table. This table brings together lots of key configuration elements like the validity and deduction periods to be used. These define the leave year, for example, 1st of January to 31st of December each year. The reduction rules, these define if and how an entitlement should be reduced for starters and leavers and part-timers. And rounding rules, these define how a calculated entitlement that may have been factored based on a part-time percentage, for instance, should be rounded, say to the nearest 0.5 days. However, for the purposes of this example, we want to see how it deals with base entitlements. The selection rule table, at a very simple level, is like the base entitlement table with the addition of a new key field, the selection rule. We can see from the table that a unique selection rule key has been assigned to each base entitlement. So if my employee is in the above groupings and is assigned to selection rule 01, then they should be entitled to 20 days. 02 would be entitled to 22 days, and so on. In terms of allocating the selection rule to the employee, the most common method is via the feature Cuomo. Feature Cuomo is referenced when any of the quota types like the ones above are being created. It is like any other HCM feature in the available fields to make the decision on what the selection rule should return, include the likes of the enterprise type uh, fields like company code, personnel area, personnel sub area, employee group, employee subgroup, then you've got things like the pay scale type, pay scale area, etc. Even to a specific work schedule rule. And things like work contract from InfoType 1 and contract type from InfoType 16. 
It's worth noting that the selection rule can also be determined in time evaluation by a mod if q rule, an improvement we will look at takes this into account. Back to the example though, I'll say that I'm using con a contract type in of type 16 to define the selection rule for absence quotas and feature Como. So I've got the following contract types, Z1 through to Z5, with highlighting different types of employees like casual temps, trainees, hourly, salary paid and director. I can then use these contract types to define the selection rule in feature Como. So let's say I do this as follows, that Z1 gives me selection rule 01, Z2 gives selection rule 02, and so on, you can, you can see from the table. This example then means that early paid employees will receive 25 days, and salaried employees will receive 28 days annual leave. Since the decision on what entitlement to leave an employee will receive is entirely dependent on some fairly detailed configuration, combined with a set feature decision, it means that the only way an employee can be assigned to a different type of leave entitlement is either via a change to the existing configuration or a change to the employee's master data by a change action or assigning new key data like personnel area sub area. This is the way it should be. Uh, if you want the system to enforce your leave policies and ensure that the right leave entitlement is granted at the right time, then you should be sticking to the configuration that you've defined. However, there are instances where there may be a need to temporarily assign an employee to a different leave entitlement. Some of the examples I can think of include where an employee is seconded or acting up for a specific period of time and you want them to receive enhanced leave for a period of time without necessarily moving them in the org structure or the enterprise structure. You could have a group of employees that are to be transferred into a department and you want to assign different leave entitlement to them for a period since they're assigned PSGs and ESGs don't have necessarily the, the required configuration. Or you simply want to give an enhanced leave entitlement to an individual to reflect good performance. These are just some of the ideas I can think of. I'm sure there's others, but um, and there may be more suitable solutions to scenarios given, but I hope you get the picture. This is where the new improvement comes in. It allows, by the assignment of a new infotype, for a different selection rule to be assigned to an employee for a specific period of time. So, looking at our earlier example, if an employee assigned to Selection Rule 3 via the config needs to be assigned to Selection Rule 04 for a period of time, then the application of this infotype will tell the system to treat them as a 04 for that period of time. This improvement is available as an individual SAP note, access to SAP support portals required, and the number of it is 1816423. This note is also included in Support Packs 95 for ECC6, and 61 for ECC 6.4. These were released in May 2013, and note there are some prerequisites that need to be taken into account. Refer to the, the note for more details. Effectively, what the new note delivers is the new infotype, double three, double five, absence quota group, into your solution. Next, you need to include infotype 3355 in any of the infotype menus used in transaction PA20 and PA30 in Customising for Personnel Management, Personnel Administration, Customising Procedures, Infotype Menus, Infotype Menu, or Maintain the View V underscore T588B directly. If Infotype 3355 is not contained within at least one Infotype Menu, then the Infotype can still be maintained in PA30. You'll still see it there, but, and this is a big but, the feature Cuomo will ignore any settings made against the employee and we'll default back to the Como rule. So if you apply the note and it doesn't work, I would suggest this is a first port of call. Lastly, you then need to define in the customizing view, V underscore T77TIM underscore AQGRP, exactly what selection rules can be selected in the infotype. So what you're doing here is actually saying these are the specific selection rules and groupings that can be selected in the infotype and can be temporarily assigned to people. It also allows you to restrict the selection rules that can be assigned. So there's obviously a bit of design and consideration to be taken when setting up this configuration table. Anyway, let's look at an example that I've built in one of our demo systems. Before I begin, if I run the report RPT quota underscore check, I can see what selection rule is assigned to a specific employee on a specific key date. This is a really useful report to check your absence quota configuration 
since it shows all the relevant configurations specific to the employee's master data on a specific day. It comes into its own when fault finding any issues on your quota configuration. I can see that there's selection group 03 assigned to this employee number 1. I know this means that the employee will receive 25 days leave entitlement. Let's prove this by creating a quota for 2014 where we can see that 25 days are generated. Now we'll go and create an InfoType 3355 for 2014. You can see I've set up, for the purposes of illustrating this improvement, five different selection rules all pointing to different entitlements. I'll assign the employee to Group 4 and this should return an entitlement in 2014 of 28 days. Let's check that. I create a 2006 record for 2014 and I can see 28 days are generated. Now if I create a 2006 for 2015, I can see the system reverts back to the standard configuration and returns an entitlement of 25 days again. I've intentionally used a very simple example here and would suggest this type would really come into its own at the outset of a new time management implementation. This would allow defined scenarios to be specified that will support the leave process in the future. With an existing system, depending on how your rules are set up, and I can imagine there will be more than a few things to consider, not least of which will relate to assigning a 3355 mid-leave year and the admin that will go along with that. However, nothing's impossible, and if you feel you would benefit from a discussion with me in this area, please feel free to contact me. Here are my contact details. I hope you found this useful, and good luck.